This is the ninth video in a big series about mapping out and practicing melodic arpeggio guitar shapes on the guitar. Every video in the series focuses on a different chord type for 12 different chord types, which are the 12 chord types that we need to be able to improvise over pretty much any chord progression in jazz and well, any chord progression because jazz is using the most kind of complex uh, harmony typically when we're improvising. So this chord today, we're doing dominant seven sus four. We're gonna do the five positions, the five shapes to play the melodic arpeggios and just the chord tones of this chord. This is such a cool sound. I love playing with this one. It's less common that people map this one out and have it ready to go as uh, as a chord tone arpeggio shape, uh, but I absolutely love it. In addition to helping our improvising, it's just great technique practice. It's great mapping out just theory clarity on the fretboard. It's great for our ears to hear these chord qualities as arpeggios as we're practicing them. I have a free resource, a free download that you can get. Use the link in the top of the description to get my chord tone vocabulary pack. It shows all the chord tone shapes, 12 different chord types, five positions, five shapes for each one. That's what we're covering in this entire series. Definitely has the dominant seven sus four chord shapes in there from this lesson. In this video, I'm going to just demonstrate through playing up and down each of those five shapes of the dominant seven sus four chord type, the uh, chord tone arpeggios just up and down how I want you to be able to practice them. Then I'll go through and tell you the fingerings that I recommend using to be able to do that. And lastly, we're just gonna improvise with each of those shapes on that exact chord type. And that's what we wanna work towards, just improvising really comfortably on any one chord type with all five of the shapes that you can uh, map out with that, all off the same root. That's what we're doing, just everything off of C. From there, then we can start exploring using that as chords are changing. Um, and it can, in real music, it gets really complex where you might switch to a chord and wanna target the chord tones and know where you are for like two beats of a chord progression or something. So in the future on this channel, we'll be talking a lot about that. First, I'm just creating this resource to make sure we are mapping out and just working on seeing and hearing and having the shapes themselves ready to go. And can we just improvise on one shape at a time? And we'll work on it in music later, but this is gonna be cool. Let's get into it. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar topics. Got a bunch of lessons here, all designed to help you gain more creative control over music so you can express yourself more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. All right, so we want to comfortably improvise over any chord type, and in this case, dominant seven sus four. And to do that, we have to know the arpeggio shapes, the chord tone forms extremely well. We wanna know them in several places, really everywhere they can be played all over the guitar. So the first thing we wanna do is just be able to play up and down the arpeggio, up and down the chord tone shape in every position. And I like to do that from the root to the root, wherever the roots exist. We're gonna start on the root, end on the root, pause and repeat every root, and don't pause or repeat anywhere else. I do this all the time in my scale videos, in my all the other chord tone videos in this series. So that's what we wanna be able to do with every position of every chord type. So gets the sound in our ears really nicely and maps it out for ourselves. Now, next step is to play the full arpeggio pattern, the full arpeggio shape with a melodic pattern. And I like this one. This maps it out even better because we don't just want to only be able to play up and down, though that's obviously the in initial step. We want to break it up and play something melodic so when we improvise, we really feel more free with this. So I'll do that one more time. This is really tricky with these uh, with these notes that are on the same fret. You have to roll your finger. You really don't want it to be ringing melodically. It's gonna do that a little bit with some of these uh, chord types, depending on the position and the pat the melodic pattern you might be doing. So, but we want to try to have it be melodic. 
So notice I'm doing this roll technique. I'm not just holding it. I'm not just letting it kind of be muddy and ringing over. There's going to be a little overlap, but you want it to be as melodic as possible. Um, so that's always step two. And then step three is we just want to improvise. Constant kind of improvisation. Eighth notes, quarter notes, any speed. Just something that's not feeling like too much pressure musically. Have a good groove and a feel. And just be able to improvise with chord tones only. You know, and you might just be going up and down a little bit, but break it up, sit on one spot. You could do straight, I'm kind of swinging it. I like to just play straight sometimes. Notice it sounds very pentatonic. We're gonna address that in a second. It's not pentatonic. And it's important that we don't just mindlessly fill in the note that would make it C minor pentatonic because it's it's actually dominant seven sus four and that minor third is not really part of the harmony. But you just wanna be able to constantly play. I call this treading water. And you just sit on two notes and kind of try to, or even one note. No, 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 try to just hang out. This really forces us to, to feel like, okay, I know where all the notes are and I could just keep playing if I want to or if I just want to fill up space aesthetically, then I have a bunch of notes I can play to do that. That's a really important step. The next step is kind of the opposite of that. We want to just back up and try to play something musical with some space, with some phrasing. So a lot of times we'll start on the root and come back to the root. Do something that really feels like, okay, this could be a song. This is this is something that feels like I'm composing. So a lot of repetition, a lot of coming back to an idea, a lot of simplicity, more space, concluding a phrase, giving it some space, and then repeating a lot, ending on the root, that kind of thing. Try to do something musical. So three rep three repetitions and then ending on the root that's that's below, you know, that kind of thing. You don't have to overthink it. I'm really not ever thinking that. I'm just describing it as I'm doing it here for you. And it's a great way to get started if playing something that feels musical and has some phrasing to it is difficult. So that is the fourth step. And then the fifth step is to explore notes outside of just the chord tones. Now, for a lot of this series, I've said, just play any note, and that's true. But with a, these scales that are, these these chord types that are coming up here, including this one, I find it more effective in some of these to really think of a specific scale. So I'm gonna recommend basically the Mixolydian scale to play around, and then you can always play chromatically around that. So, in this case, it's gonna be an F major scale, or C Mixolydian. So that note's not in the chord, but it is in the scale. So it allows us to play really melodically, but we have our home base notes. That's why the chord tones are so crucial. But you absolutely can add in chromatic notes as much as you want to. It's your own choice of how, how much flavor you want to add in of different sounds. So it's nice to have a backing track for this. Just have a little loop that's doing a... That kind of chord thing. Just, these are just voicings of dominant 7 sus 4. So I am trying to play kind of musically. So there's that ex extra note there. You can just go by ear and find stuff, or you can work out the mode or the scale. And again, if you want to hear chromatics, that's fine too. I l really like the sound of just playing around with that Mixolydian scale. So if you, if you add that minor third that makes it pentatonic, C minor pentatonic, 
it actually can work if you start to get used to it because the chord itself doesn't have a third, so it's kind of nebulous. It kind of sounds like a minor 11 chord then. But just be careful because in the context of an actual piece of music, if it's a dominant seventh sus chord, uh, dominant seventh sus four chord, it is, that's not the implied harmony and it might sound a little funky, but that's okay. You can play anything and recover from it by just moving around chromatically. harmonies that come out of this. So that's an example of, that's using the major third up to this four of the chord, then using the flat three down to the two. You can play anything you want. It's up to you if you like it. There are no wrong notes, so don't ever think, ooh, I'm not gonna play that note. Just think, how else, how can I place that note to make it work? So those are the five steps. I've been doing that on all the chord types this whole series, but of course I'm going over them with each video, each chord type, because I want this to be a resource for just how to comfortably improvise over any one chord. You don't have to watch all the videos. Let's go through the other four shapes, the other four arpeggio chord tone shapes that we want to be able to do this with, and we'll go through a little faster now that we've gone through those five steps. So next shape here, oh, we want to just go root to root. Do that one more time. A lot of kind of pinky hopping and, and rolling on this one. That's what I prefer all fifth position here. This is quite an awkward chord because of the tuning of the guitar in fourths and then the fourths within the chord structure. So that pinky roll there is quite tricky. And now we're gonna do the melodic pattern. Dun, 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 dun. So basically bu, 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 off of every note of the chord. Dun, dun, dun. Up to another chord, up to the next chord tone and back. So that's really awkward. Dun. You can work out your own fingering if that's easier for you to go finger one, three, one, and then go three, four, three, that's fine. You just have to reach back over here to get to the next note. kind of harder with the pinky there. I do like, I liked it better when I was using the tips of the fingers. You'll figure that stuff out as you play with it more. Uh, really tricky, but really shows us that we know the the arpeggio form quite well, where all the chord tones are. And the next step is just that constant improvisation. That's, a, that's the fitness test to see how well do we really know it? Can we just keep playing? Don't worry about if you love it or if it's you know, particularly musical, you can try to have a good tone and feel and time and groove if you want, but just kind of, just play constant notes. Nice and slow is fine, quarter notes is fine. If I do quarter notes, I like to test myself if I can jump around more. Make sure you can see the whole map. And if I do faster notes, I'm just like, basically challenging myself, can I keep going? Okay, so that's step three. Step four is the phrasing, the musicality. Try to make something musical like a little song. 
something that really fe feels lyrical, play around with that. And then we're gonna try to add weird notes, not weird notes, extra notes, but of course they can be weird. Getting weird is very fun. You know, like what, you can just try stuff. What if you add this note? And you might say, I really don't want that note. But then the challenge is, well, how can I use it in a way that does work? Every time you hear a note that sounds sour or you thought was wrong, ask yourself, well, how could, how could that note be used to make it not sound wrong? And that still doesn't mean you have, that you have to like the sound or you want it, but it can work. There, I just went through the C mixolydian scale. Or F major scale. Which is kind of nice. And then if, if I'm running through it, totally fine. If I pause though, I know where all my chord tones are. It's the power of arpeggios, the power of chord tone knowledge. I love just playing with strictly chord tones, but of course it's limiting, and I like the limitation. And I like just kind of running with scales as well. But for that to work, I need to know where I can kind of start off from and, and pause on. Just the inside notes. So if that sounds good to me, I need to know, oh, where's my home base? so I can stop somewhere. You really have this home base to always come back to. You can do anything around that. Okay, next position. Here's the next position. this one. I love the, this little shape we get out of it. Little harmonic shapes that we can play with it. It's beautiful sound. Okay, this chord is is more rare to map out in a chord tone kind of improvisation way. Um, and I certainly avoided it for a long time. But But now that I use it, I am so happy with it. There are tons of things you could do over a dominant seventh sus four. You could think of different types of scales, different sounds, pentatonic sounds, but I just, for every chord type, I want to be ready with chord tones as the home base so I can branch out from there and then, and then always land on something safe and feel really confident and comfortable with those main notes. So now let's do the pattern, the melodic pattern. <laughs> you do that just try to improvise kind of your fitness test constant notes you're going to get a nice little pentatonic feeling area here on all the shapes you're going to have two note two strings in a row that just have this whole step and whole step it's a fun little spot to play with just try to play all around this is really tricky to have that jump Part of why this is so tricky is that you have strings here. You have this string, top string, third string, and sixth string that all just have one note on them. One note only, so it's really awkward. It's not what we're used to. You can of course do this with a backing track too if you want to. Okay, and then the next thing is to try to play with phrasing. Whoopsie, I don't wanna play that note. That's okay to use if you recover from it. But that's the accidental note that you might hit. It's good that I did that because this is going to make you think that you're in a C minor pentatonic shape. And that's really not the intended sound of the harmony. The sound of the harmony is much more that kind of thing, like potentially it's going to resolve to a C dominant seventh chord before it goes somewhere else. Um, in actual music. 
Um, but back to this, back to just improvising with the chord tones and doing something musical. Notice I do a lot of that when I'm doing this demonstration. It's like four ideas. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the, the first three are really repetitive. And then the last one just kind of goes in and concludes on a root. So no wrong way to do that, really. Just try to be musical with it. Let's play with the loop here and add our extra notes around. Again, this is the dangerous part. The reason I don't say just go for it and try to add anything is that it's n you're probably going to end up doing that. And that's okay because you can do that. You can do anything. But I'd rather you get used to kind of the intended harmony around it, which again, explore any notes, but an F major scale or C mixolydian would be great. doing a lot of those runs is just F major scale and then I'll land back on chord tones let's do the other positions here's the next arpeggio form that's root to root one more time okay and then we'll do our melodic pattern uh, you go from the lowest all the way up and back down for the melodic pattern don't worry about how you end it just get through the whole thing it sounds a little especially because you're used to the sound of the root because of the root to root arpeggio uh, practice at the, the first thing it sounds weird to just kind of be down here and wanting to hear it resolve at the end uh, but just make sure you can do it. It's really awkward on this chord form. Like that is a kind of barring thing that's gonna make it ring over itself. That's not ideal, but we just do our best. See, I played that minor third accidentally. And so, that's going to happen and just be on the lookout for it. We're trying to get a different sound in our head than that. Uh, so next is going to be improvising with it. Just constant notes. Again, this is the fitness test. How well do we see it? Get it out of our system that we want to play a bunch of notes to prove to ourselves or to anyone else that we know it because that happens we don't want that to happen in our real improvisations in our real solos like oh let me show myself and let me show people that i know all the notes now nah, get that out of your system here and then you can try to be musical with it really just thinking musical statement I didn't do that step before it I'd be tempted to you know again kind of review everything okay so after we try to do some musical phrasing with it and it's not bad if it, to, to play a bunch of notes if you want that sound we just want to do it because we want the sound and we want to pause because we want the sound of space not because we ran out of notes to play so it's great to do that uh, let's play our backing track here and add some of those no extra notes in that might come from the F major scale or C mixolydian or just all over the place. Chromatic connections are great too. Check out my scale series on how to play the five positions of any scale type, tons of scale types, 
um, in that series, different video for each scale type, how to play the five positions and do the root to root approach with it. So if you're not sure how to find that F major scale for yourself, check out that series. There's a link in the description. Fun stuff, just a beautiful chord to get comfortable with. This is one of those chords that is very often not addressed very specifically in improvisations that you hear. It's kind of skated over or just treated as dominant seven. So we're really getting specific flavor and sound in our hands and in our head. Um, let's go on to the last arpeggio shape for this chord type. Okay, here's the last position of C dominant seven sus four, the fifth chord tone arpeggio form. <laughs> Very awkward, especially up here. The frets are so much smaller. If you're if you're playing an acoustic guitar, you know you can't do it there and you can't do it over here either. Because well, you could with open strings, but I'm not really including open strings in in this uh, approach for now. But obviously, just do it somewhere else on a different route if you need to practice the form there. But um, but let's do it this way. Let's do third finger and then pinky, and then first finger, and then pinky again, and then shift over to first finger for those top two notes, for those top three notes on the top two strings. And then pinky, that's what I call the inchworm technique. So you're contracting your position then then expanding out the other side. Okay, then pinky, third. Again, very cramped there, but good to work on that. Notice how I'm just kind of going up and down the whole physical shape, just to get comfortable with it. That's an obvious thing to, to do and that's I'm kind of not even including that in the five steps because it's just what we kind of default do and it's sometimes all we do so we want to make sure we more intentionally do the root to root I'll do it again okay very awkward very clunky but we still want to do that now we're gonna do the pattern tricky good technique practice really good technique practice okay I very intentionally don't play with a metronome unless I'm working on time so I can speed up when I'm kind of feeling comfortable and then slow down when I need to because I don't I don't want the metronome to be pushing me along and then making me um, play something sloppy or uh, bail on the time I'll do it when I'm working on on time and any in any kind of way working on my time uh, but if I'm just doing vocabulary like this I like to keep it very fluid very on purpose um, so that's the melodic pattern phase and now we're gonna do the constant improv again I like to do sometimes slower so I'm jumping around more and then just go a little faster with eighth notes make sure I could pl keep playing after you do that try to do something musical with it there and then we're gonna try to add other notes again taste anything you want and just try to find a way to make it work I'm playing obviously a lot of chord tones but testing other things around that.
that was a lot of just F major. To me, it's not enough to say F major works on this chord or C mixolydian works on this chord. Because I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna accidentally land on the third and, and just kind of intuitively do that. I need to really feel the chord tones of this particular chord. So that's a lot of experimenting um, and just have fun with it. Once you find even a couple extra notes that, that feel good to you. It feels so good to have that, have that home base you can go back to and then colorful notes to play around with. Okay, that's it for the five arpeggio shaped chord tone forms. For dominant seven, sus four, we did them all off C. Obviously you can move them to any root and do that. But those are the five steps to do over any uh, chord type. And that's why I'm doing this whole series. We're going over those five steps with 12 different chord types uh, and just being thorough about it. And I hope you can hear and, and feel and see the power for yourself of like, okay, wow, yeah, that is the step to get there. We need to, we need to be that comfortable playing over just one chord, just statically if we're ever gonna to get to the point of, of playing really comfortably and freely and expressively on that chord type when it comes up in music, which we'll be working on later on this channel. I'll be posting videos about, about doing that, but setting up the foundation for it here, we need to just feel great about playing over any chord type on its own in all the positions that we can do that. All right, I love that chord. If you wanna get the shapes from this lesson and the melodic arpeggio guitar shapes from this whole series, just grab my chord tone vocabulary pack, use the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. That's a totally free PDF download. And if you liked this lesson, please hit that like button. I'm here every week with a new lesson. Next week, we are continuing on with this series. We have a few more chord types to cover. Next week, we are going to map out and practice the augmented triad chord shapes kind of an awkward chord, kind of a weird sounding chord, but having that triad down is really, really useful for using it over all kinds of other chord types. So we'll talk about that next week. Looking forward to it. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.